Yadda, yadda. The ultimate how to build the sauna will give you all the dirty details you need to know. Warning. This video may contain half-naked ugly guys. Yadda, yadda, yadda. Sauna. Ah. Now let me tell you the story of how this started. The winters are long in Norway and I wanted some super heat. I placed the sauna as close to the lake as possible. This build starts with a good working space and the stubble dance to test it. Score! There is you in the tin. I start by making the base frame out of treated wood. The base will be about uh, 2 times 3 meters. And remember to work with the ugly face. Then the build gets better. Well, I'm not really Finnish, so I will stop with my phony accent. Because of the positioning in the landscape, I have to drill one hole and cast three concrete pillars to be able to support and level the sauna. I use the frame to find out exactly where I want to place the pillars. I measure the frame diagonally to make sure that all the sides will be as parallel as possible. I don't want a crooked Russian sauna. In Norway we have to dig down one meter or to solid rock because of freezing temperatures. They will make the concrete move up or down and change the leveling of the sauna. I'm just a do-it-myself amateur with cheap tools and do this mostly by eye and hand coordination. Many people will use their lasers and super weapons to get this in the right height. One of my pillars got a bit too low and I will fix this later with a ridiculous surprise. And whatever you do, remember to bring a clown. It makes life more fun. I use this weight to gain about an inch and some extra platform for the frame. Pretty ugly, but it worked out great for me. It's tried and tested. I will bury my mistake next summer as I level up the terrain around the sauna. I continue with a frame within the frame to strengthen the carrying load. Just to let you know, I'm no carpenter, no builder, no tile guy, no sauna builder, no Finnish douche. I'm just a regular do-it-myself guy that enjoys using the things I've built. I do however do proper research, I'm quite thorough and I've had about 9 years practicing the different skills needed to complete a proper sauna. And with that in mind I hope you will get some good tips and ideas from how I built my sauna. And then uh, there's a bench coming uh, over here. There's a bench coming over there. Uh, there's a window, big window, uh, down to the lake. There's a, a little window pointing this way. And the oven will most likely come around here, doorway over there. Super. And the family is always here to help out. Yeah. Or steal things. Thank you. Thanks, Edwin. You're welcome. Woo! 
I strengthen the area where the sauna oven will be. I pick up a second hand window for free and take it out of the frame. They can work great in a sauna. Make sure the glass is not punctured or damaged. I get to reduce the cost of one wall with insulation and sauna planks by having a big window. I make the last frame to fit the window perfectly with one centimeter extra. So just a little detail here, I left uh, about two centimeters here, so when I put on the uh, terrace boards, impregnated terrace, impregnated, uh, that's not the word, treated uh, terrace board, impregnated is uh, probably something else. Uh, terrace boards treated, so they'll have a place to rest, meaning this one is hanging two centimeters on the outside, which then I'll have to uh, use some paint or uh, the vice I'm thinking of using. You should place the highest bench 110 to 120 cm down from the roof and the next bench 40 cm down from the top bench. My floor will consist of three layers, treated wood, wet room plates and tiles on top. Never use treated wood for the flooring because it might give off unwanted chemical gases when heated. I will also use a waterproof membrane under the tiles to completely shut off the treated wood layer. I love it when my family comes to see how far the sauna has come and I get a natural pause in the sauna build. I've chosen to do a flat sloped roof. I think it's the easiest to build and the roof is really small. A sauna guy once told me he installed a pipe in the lower part of the roof and had some problems with ice building on the upper side of the chimney, eventually leading to a shower party inside. He probably did more things wrong but I will place my oven and pipe under where the roof is highest.
This summer I also made a shed to store my wood and other materials. I used to have wood everywhere and had to search for where my wood was. Now it is a blessing to have a wood shed. This is a pretty basic budget type of roof in Norway. There are two layers. It's just a matter of rolling it out, gluing it up and covering the edges with some sort of fitting. Some extreme weather is gonna come it might uh, pour down uh, 80 to 100 millimeters so I'm gonna uh, and uh, blow powerful winds I'm gonna remove the tarp so uh, it doesn't just fly away the whole thing is gonna get wet though but it's better than uh, my new sauna flying to another dimension I made these uh, strange uh, corners I don't know it's uh, that's the proper way of doing it but uh, they're made and I need to insulate them before I uh, put the uh, uh, cover uh, wind cover on I prepared to put in the window using some strips on the back side and wooden locks on the top outside so the window don't fly out.
I seal the window on the inside and outside and lock it in place with Tech 7. It's some type of construction glue with many uses. I find out that the crooks selling sauna ovens want $400 for a plate for the oven to stand on. It is to reduce heat towards the floor. I make one instead for $8. There are mouse and rats where I live, so I seal the insulation from them by using mouse band. I got these planks for free if I took down the shed they were built from. A great way of saving some dollars on your project. But since the planks are quite old, I had to pre-drill holes for screws and nails so the planks don't crack. I could, you could build a sauna from these uh, planks alone and without insulation, but I want 10 cm insulation and I don't want the ratty smell of these planks in my sauna. This plank was so funny. Look at it pop up in the other end. It didn't want to be a part of a sauna, that's for sure. I bought this door for $80 through Norwegian Craigslist. Most popular material these days are glass doors. It's too fancy for me and I prefer a better insulated old fashioned wooden door. This is a Norwegian Bice. It is some uh, tar based product that smells absolutely heaven. Well, almost. Bice is a product that lets you see the grain in the wood, lets out the difference in colors and offers weather resistance. While its counterpart paint just covers the whole thing in one color. Most of you probably waited most for this moment when I start doing the inside of the sauna. 
The building itself is pretty normal, but it's on the inside the magic happens. There are many details to remember, so stick with the video. I start by making the top hole for the ventilation. It should be placed on the opposite side of the floor intake to ensure best airflow, like in this image. I used a Norwegian DIY forum to read all about the dirty details that a sauna should feature. I would like to give a special thanks to Dr. Sacke for sharing great information in there. Look, I am your father. Finnish sauna insulation rules says that you should have at least 10 cm insulation in the walls and minimum 10 in the roof. My sauna does 100 degrees Celsius when it's minus 20 outside, if I wanted to. This alone says that it's well built and insulated. Later on I give details about calculating the size of the sauna oven. A sauna should not use plastic steam protection, but instead this aluminum foil. It will reflect heat better. I heard the plastic works too, but I just follow the basic rules. Remember to seal up where it overlaps or where it is punctured with a special aluminum tape. The roof was kind of tricky, but with a bit of persistence I got a hang of it. Remember to fold down the edges with a couple of centimeters. These one centimeter wet room boards aren't normally used for walls. They are pretty cheap compared to other solutions. I get a layer between the treated wood and the tiles to avoid the gases of heated treated wood. Tried, tested and approved by me. You just cut them with a standing knife, bend it and cut again. They are pretty easy to deal with. I fasten the ones to the wall and the others are just free floating on the floor. After all plates are laid out I use Tech 7 to seal up all the seams and gluing the whole thing together. It dries overnight and I check the seams the day after. We are ready for the next step now. According to the ventilation plan I have to drill a hole in the floor behind where the oven will be. The drainage I use is 50 mm. I was told it was a bit small but experience by usage tells me it was enough for my sauna. And once again my friend Tech7 is here to help out fastening the drainage that doubles up as a ventilation point. I now seal up everything before I prepare for the wet room membrane. I kind of treat this as a bathroom. Since I'm not a tile guy, I start by laying out all the tiles to see how I need to cut and if I have enough. The tiles were given away for free, so there's a mix of tiles. I start preparing for the tiling by smearing on a primer so that the membrane will have something to stick to. Yeah. 
This was my first time using a membrane. Lesson learned was that I should use more than what I did. I ended up with some leftovers that would be better used in the beginning. I chose the tile floor because I prefer it in a room that will get splashed with water. This floor gets warm and then the water evaporates after you leave the sauna. You could also use a non-treated wooden floor. These strips provide the airflow behind the panel and should be around 1 inch. I really should be sponsored by Tech7. Goddamn chickens! And I was supposed to flip that uh, chicken poo somewhere and it hit me in the face. God damn it. This and the ice, it's disgusting. Ugh. just gotta hate those chickens once in a while <laughs> okay which one of you was it come on show yourself <laughs> dr. Sake told me I had to reinforce under where the oven is going so I'll just do it And he also told me I need to put something around the drainage to make sure rodents couldn't come in. Some other friendly guy from the forum told me that too much steel were showing off on this fork thing. Monkey says, monkey does. Finally we can start with the paneling. There are different types but I went with the cheapest, spruce. I ordered about 22 square meters and that cost about a thousand dollars. Next step up was two thousand dollars. You can pay what you want really. But I'm making this thing on a budget. Total costs was somewhere under four thousand dollars.
According to fireplace regulations, you need some protection. I made this one inch concrete plate the same way as the plate for the oven. The Norwegian regulation says something like minimum two inches from non-burning material, i.e. concrete, to oven placed in the open. In addition to this, I also used two inches from the wall to the plate because it looks good and it is even more secure. It's tried and tested and it works great. Now take the space a bit up here. Found the hole. Okay, good. These shoes will not win a beauty contest, but they work and uh, didn't cost anything. You could make your cement cast with shoes in it, and that is a free tip right there. Before you buy your sauna oven, you need to calculate the cubic of your room. My room is about 2 by 3 by 2, which equals 12 cubic meter. My window steals 2.2 square meters, and therefore I add these to the cubic meter, giving me around 14.2 cubic. Now I know how powerful an oven I need. I went for the Harivia Pro 20, which is supposed to support 8 to 20 cubic. It was perfect for my sauna. It's tried and tested. Sätt den på. This is pretty ridiculous. When I was doing the measurements for this, I assumed that these beams that goes straight up was on the same si uh, place, on this side and this side. I didn't even think about it. So what happens is that this beam is further back than this thing. So I think I have five centimeters of difference. So I'll probably have to move this backwards cover this and that will be the solution <laughs> well shit happens oh <laughs> 
what? I had some leftover panels that was just enough to cover what I needed for the benches. Having a table saw is a great way of saving some money and time. It is not recommended however to use spruce for benches because of the branches, but I have experienced no problems with it. Before you start using your oven, you need to pre-fire it. The best is to do this in the open before you install it. Obviously I read this afterwards. The reason you do this is that the oven is covered with some chemical that needs to evaporate. It stinks and it is most likely not going to increase your health. I installed some string lights on the outside and found out it gives enough light together with the flames on the inside of the sauna. Yadda yadda. Ah. We not finish love this. Ice cream. I hope you all enjoyed this online sauna party. And I must apologize for the clickbait thumbnail. But I warned you in the beginning about the ugly half-naked guy. Kippis, cheers, skull.